Boy, is it an exciting time to be a hockey fan. We got teams fighting for playoff positioning, plenty of hat tricks, and OT game winners. Tuesday's 13 games late around the National had a little bit of everything. Welcome into On the Fly. I'm Alexa Landestoy. Mike Kelly will join me shortly. Let's start at Madison Square Garden. You got the top team in the Metro taking on the top team in the Central, both in the running for the President's Trophy, and both would love to get the win. As the Rangers are in the midst of a tough schedule, and the Jets see contending teams and four of their next five games. The first meeting between these two teams required overtime. Would this one need extra time on Tuesday? Let's take you out to the action at MSG. Scott Arneal, the man running the bench. Rick Bonus, the head coach. He's gone back home to get a minor medical procedure done. Heavyweight matchup in net. Oh, man, the goal is outstanding here in the first period. Was the Vesna Trophy being handed out tonight? Because that's the way both goalies played. They showed us exactly why they're the two of the best in the league. And what was an exciting first period? I mean, to think that we're 0-0 when we saw so much intensity, so much action towards the net. Kyle Connor is on it. Steered it back. Dean Schmidt shoots it. Knocked down. Shifley. Score! Terrific hands from Shifley. And the Jets open the scoring. It's 1-0. It's a good read to get to the rebound by Shesterkin here. He just doesn't get all of it. And those are the ones that tend to go in. No shots on the first power play for the Rangers, and they'll try once again. Kotko set up deep. Shot by lot for years. Save. Rebound. Score! His first as a New York Ranger. There's Talon on their second unit. There's Lafreniere with the shot. And then just the reach by Winberg. The Winnipeg with its second power play. The Foley tees it up. Not a hand shot. Rebound. Connor fires and scores. Kyle Connor, a power play goal. And it's 2-1 Winnipeg. Minnesota up near the line. Look at Shankly. Knock it away. He's got a break. Mark Shankly alone scores. A thing of beauty. And it's 3-1 Winnipeg. Consistency, balance in his game. And this is starting in the right spot. Defense first. Igor Shesterkin to the bench. Empty dead. Extra skater on for the Rangers. Fox with a shot to flip the block. Score! Alexei Lafreniere with a minute 54 to go. Cuts the Winnipeg lead. Oh, the nose thing. Jag ser här och jag känner att den är avstängd. Kan man lita på sina ögon? Ja, det kan man. Tack. And his all around game, he's always had a great defensive stick. He's situationally very aware player, somebody that you can count on. You just noticed him consistently throughout this game and try to do that he's a very selective shooter that's why he always has a pretty high shooting percentage he doesn't take perimeter shot. i love this play here blocks a pass right in front of the net takes a big hit but keeps the puck out of any kind of shots there's that defensive stick again poking a breakaway for himself that he finishes on to give trouble in front of his goaltender that's the kind of thing you see a lot uh from from mark shifley if you watch him well that's a nice two goal lead just a monster game from mark shifley and you know what, you give some credit long enough, and then he gets the Winnipeg Jets on the board, going to the areas he need to go to to score, and he's never been to Connor Hellebuck as well, who is really good in this game for Winnipeg. Um, and this is a team that's right up at the top of the Central Division. Look at the ice time Shifley had in this game. My goodness, there was only one guy ahead of him, a defenseman, Josh Morrissey, on his team. So, really impressive effort. Yeah, from two teams battling for the top spot in the Stanley Cup playoffs to another team that's just trying to fight to get in. Let's get you out to the action in Hockey Town. The Red Wings taking on the Blue Jackets. Important point for Detroit every night from here on. Here's a break. Wierenski on a breakaway. Fires and scores. Zach Wierenski, who was goalless in the previous 13 games, pounces on a turnover, gives Columbus the lead at one to nothing. Here's Texier, who's out of the box, moving in, third breakaway, and scores. The Jackets with three breakaways, they have converted on two, and lead this one to nothing, and the Blue Birds are out in force. A lot to celebrate for the Blue Jackets. 20 seconds to go, man advantage. Kane with it now, top of the right circle, down low, back in front.
Well, this was perfectly executed. Kane to Fabry, bang, bang, bang. So the Red Wings back in this one. I can't imagine what was said in the between the first and the second in the room. Oh, oh. they score! What they Kicked in by Columbus, and it's a two-two tie. Whatever was said is working. That's a kicking motion, but from the right team. So this goal is going to be Cider's goal. Looking to improve on a one for the last 19 for the man advantage. First unit out here. Marchenko fires, shoots, and scores! Krill Marchenko finally on the board. His first goal in 10 games. And empty six skaters for Detroit. Scramble faceoff. The Brinkett gets it back to Gosses. Spare and across now King. Save River. They score! Raymond! Lucas Raymond does it again! And he banked it in off the defenseman's knee. Sider drops it back to Brinkett to Kane. Kane's right in. Shooting with Trenton. He scores! Patrick Kane! Showtime! Does it again! The call on the ice has been confirmed. Good goal. Two huge points for Detroit. Just hung in there to the end. So um, I like the response from the group. And, um, you know, obviously that's a huge win for us. Hopefully it gives us some some momentum, and uh, you know, hopefully we can look back at this at some point and say this was like a, a big turning point for our season to get some momentum, and, and uh, obviously two big points as well. So many emotional narratives this time of year. Obviously, if we lose, there's a big narrative. Now we win. We've won two of our last three, and we're over that line again. Needing some momentum, Patrick Kane records his 74th career game-winning goal, which puts him in a tie with Joe Pavelski for the fifth most game winners by a U.S.-born player in NHL history. And Mike, you just heard the post-game sound. Detroit really needed those two points after losing eight of their last nine. What stood out to you most about Patrick Kane's OT game winner? Oh, Patrick Kane's clutch. I don't know. Do people know that? He, he's one of the most clutch players of all time. And he just finds himself in the right spots. And he was involved in the tie-in goal. Obviously, scores in overtime. What stood out to me on the game winner was Moritz Sider. Look at the pick that he sets on Johnny Gaudreau to give Patrick Kane that time and space. And there's the argument to the official saying, hey, I had my guy until I didn't because a much bigger guy set a pick play on me. But Kane again. Finds that spot, short side high. I've talked about this a million times with goalies. Good players are going to find that spot, and he does. But uh, you give a lot of credit to the Detroit Red Wings. Look, they, they've been through a tough stretch. Even when things were going well for Detroit this season, the underlying numbers were not pretty, uh, and it painted a picture of a team that was a lot closer to average than, than you know, very good. They found a way, and they had to get this two points against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Patrick Kane delivered. Yeah, I know Capitals fans were locked into this one because the Capitals jumped Detroit just yesterday in the playoff standings. Now Detroit takes back that final wild card spot in the East. I've got a feeling this one's going to come down to the wire. <laughs> but time now for us to head out to Long Island where the Canes look to deal the Isles their fifth straight loss. Shea sends one in front. Knocked down by Jarvis. Scores! Seth Jarvis! Knocked down the shot from the point, controlled the puck, and he puts it home. He now has goals in five of his last six games, and he gives Carolina the early lead. The drop for Jarvis, the return right back to Jarvis. Score! Oh, what a beautiful give and go with Gensel. Two nothing, Canes. This is why coaches try to find chemistry in duos up front, and you can see it on full display. Jake Gensel, the newly acquired. Give and go to Seth Jarvis, who has his second on the evening. Five seconds to go in the period. Natchez wrist shot, score! Natchez picks the corner with 1.1 seconds on the clock. A backbreaker for the Islanders. It's 3-0, Canes. The Islanders again had gone a record 10 games without allowing a first period goal. A franchise record that was broken tonight with three scored by Carolina here in the first period. Marcel behind the net. 10 seconds to go in the second. Lee wheels around to his forehand, shoots to Chetkov, makes the save. If Paint comes around, it's Spechnikov with his hand, knocked it out of harm's way. Here's Barzal, tries to make one out in front, stabbed at by Palmieri. As the horn expires, the second period comes to an end, and the frustration 
continues for the Islanders as they have not been able to put one past Piotr Kachekov. Mark Nelson has been quiet tonight. This whole line has been quiet. Now with room. Shoot. Save made by Kachekov. The rebound. Scott are able to get one past Kachetkov. It's 3-1 here in the third. Patrick Waugh not afraid to empty the net early, especially down by two. Mark Nelson gains the zone. Stymie there by Jarvis, taken back by Ajo. Gensel eyes the empty net, scores! Dog on a bone. That's a lot of the coaches like to say. For the Canes fans out there, sweeter than Carolina Barbecue. And now Matt Martin is gonna drop the gloves as he will go with Lemieux with 55.9 to go. Lemieux knows he recently got his contract, right? His extension, credit to him. And in the case of Matt Martin, hey, we just can't go down. Yeah, it's a, it's a good road trip for us. Um, you know, we just want to make sure we're feeling good here and it's a good team effort by us. So uh, we'll, take the, we'll take the win here and move on. <laughs> There's just a lot of high-end players. They're well coached. Um, they play the right way and it's been fun. They've, they've uh, taken me in really well so far. And, you know, I've joined every, uh, enjoyed every day, so just trying to make the most of it and have some fun with it. It's, it's been unbelievable. Um, a really tight group. They've kind of taken me in pretty fast here, and, you know, going on the road trip with them was really special. So uh, it's just the beginning. Hopefully there's some more of it. Well, it really seems like Rod Brindamore has found that right combination with Jake Gensel, Sebastian Ajo, and Seth Jarvis. Mike, are you surprised that this line has instant chemistry? Not really when you consider the players. Uh, it's a good question, though. And you know what? Jake Hensel, when he first got there, was on a different line. He was doing just fine as well. So it's kind of like whatever you want to do, these guys are going to figure it out. It's the Carolina Hurricanes. We know they're a good team, and they got a lot of good players. You think of the additions of Kuznetsov and Gensel. Man, elite playmaker, elite goal scorer. Something that Carolina has been missing probably over the years. And this line has been together now full time for the last three games. They've dominated every single game. And obviously, then, if you look at their numbers overall, they are dominant. So, a couple goals by Seth Jarvis to kick things off for Carolina in this game. And again, they won more battles. They played that hurricane style of hockey, creating turnovers. Uh, this is what the line has done over that last three games of five on five. Outscored the opposition 4 0, heavily outshooting them. Same thing in terms of quality shots in just over 30 minutes of ice time. Carolina's always been good. We know that. They've lacked that goal scoring punch. And, and that's what always seems to bite them in the playoffs. They just can't find that goal that they need. Yeah, Jake Gensel can get you those goals, and he can help set them up, too. Goals, and you mentioned it, moves at the deadline now with the win on Tuesday. They are just two points back of the Rangers at the top spot at the Metro. So we'll wait to see how that one plays out. Time now for us to head to Philadelphia, where the Flyers were looking to snap an eight-game head-to-head losing streak against Toronto. This is a huge game, but the Flyers will play without their captain. Sean Couturier is going to be a healthy scratch for the first time in his career. With no Sean Couturier, uh, this is an opportunity for Morgan Frost to kind of cement who he wants to be. Back to Frost. They want to get it to the point to Cam York. Dropping it for Tippett, who's got some room. He'll take the shot. Let's go! 19 seconds in, and the Flyers are already on top. Simple play, get it to the net, and Tippett with traffic recognizes it, and Edmonton not able to come up with the block tonight. Gloria coming in. They're talking about when they want this. As Gloria gets away, he says to Reed, we can go wherever you want. Right away, it's up to you. Here we go. Ring the bell. Gloria and Reeves. As expected, Gloria keeping him at arm's length. Got a left in. And over the top. Not helped by Reeves. Now Gloria goes to work with the right. And takes him down. And the crowd loves it. So does he. Here's Sanon looking for a goal. And he gets it. Sanon. Tippett has a puck go past him, and then it's Sanheim just one on one with Samson off to Tippett. He'll turn, side of the net, Fairby trying to move it in front, stop, second try! How did it not go in? The net came up, the puck stayed out. Here's Frost, holds, fire, score! Morgan Frost again likes the win, and the Flyers are up 3 0. Adder makes the play to Frost, who just hops on, and Frost wastes no time. Morgan Riley with the drive by screen on his own goal.
high rotation with the defenseman activating. Nobody spots for Tuzzi. And there's Watton out of the box with it. Watton swings with it. Oh, the pass to Tiffany Fan down and he gets it back. Centers it in front. They score. I'm not talking on Sean, I'm not debating with you, I'm not conversing with you, it's between Sean and I. So just talk to me about the game, guys. And Sean was out, how do you think the team responded, especially? It has nothing to do with Sean being out. You asked me about the team. I see, yeah. How did they respond in your eyes? Our team played good tonight. Well, I thought we managed the, managed the game okay. There's some guys that still have to understand situational play, but I'm not picking this apart. This is about somehow getting points, and we get two huge points here tonight. Uh, we'll get on the plane tomorrow and try to find a way to uh, get some other points in Carolina. Torts not wanting to talk about his captain being a healthy <laughs> scratch, but the Leafs Yarr. pushed hard there in the third. The Flyers still came out on top. How did Philly do it, Mike, especially with some of those key players watching from the press box? Well, look, John Tortorella talked about find a way to get it done. Now, that's what they did. Toronto outplayed them in general, and they certainly pushed in the third period, as we saw in that game. I give credit, though, to the Flyers. They got in lanes. They used their sticks. They blocked shots. Um, their, their attention to detail in terms of positioning defensively, getting those sticks in lanes as well, uh, is something the coach talked about after the game, and they did do a good job of that. You look at the last 10 minutes, there's a lot of guys laying out, blocking shots, a lot of guys getting their sticks and passing lanes to keep those seam plays out of the mix for the Toronto Maple Leafs. That helps you win. Sam Harrison was really good in this game as well, so... Uh, this is a big gamble by John Tortorella. You healthy scratch your captain. Philly responded. They came out and scored 19 seconds into the game, and they got a lead. They protected it. What happens with the captain status going forward? We'll have to wait and see. This 13 game slate on Tuesday did not disappoint. Let's get you out now to Nashville. The Predators were looking for a 14 game point streak that was on the line. Top line on for Nashville here with O'Reilly centering Forsberg. There's a shot in the goal. If you're not talking about Roman Yossi, what are you talking about? He's been the best defenseman in the National Hockey League on the planet since November. This guy is just on fire right now. Turnover picked up by Zucker with speed. His shot. Save is the rebound by Devo Villiers. Chopping at it. And the whistle. Wes McCauley waited. He wasn't sure. Now Cunning mixing it up in front of the net with Bovillier. Now here's Granlin coming in. And a goal there by the as he picks the corner, beats his former teammate Saros, and it's 1-1. Taken by Bordalo. Out to the point, Ferraro has loose, and he scores. Put it far down. Well, you can just tell, Nashville is out of rhythm. And for the first time, the Sharks have the lead. Angelista again, orchestrating some offense. Out to the point. The shot. Into the traffic. Rebound. Score! In his first game in the gold jersey, Jason Zucker. Gets on the board for the home team. It's two to two. Josie now back out there. Attacks. Gets around Luke Cut. Josie. Celery pass. Rebound. Score. Yossi made it happen. And the Karen pumps home the rebound for a 3 2 lead. Out to the wing. Evangelist makes his move to the slot. A back air. Got the Sharks pinned in their own end. Turn over, score! Double M, Michael McCarron, doubling the goals. He's got two tonight. It's 5-2 Nashville. Bovillier. One-timer, Barry, score! Mark Jankowski got the tip, and the route is on. It's Nashville. It's 6-2. to Here they come again. McDonough to the side of the net. Forsberg gets in on the end. He's got a three-point game. Here comes Novak getting in. He scores! Make it eight. And the Nashville Predators have tied a franchise high. 15 straight with at least a point. In impressive fashion. Down 2-1 in the second, and then they put it in another gear. Down 2-1 in the second. What really switched there to have seven unanswered goals? Yeah, we were just we were letting us have pucks, like I just said. We got we got a little bit of energy from that penalty kill that we had. Uh, the crowd fed off that, and from that from then on, we we, we controlled the play. Um, so I can't thank the crowd enough tonight. It was awesome. 
Two goals for you tonight, but your line has been clicking. What's working? Ah, we're hard to play against. Um, we, we, we're relentless on pucks. Uh, we finish our checks. We go to the net. Uh, we're strong, and uh, we do all the little things uh, correctly. So uh, hopefully we can continue that. Uh, more success uh, in the future. With the win over the Sharks on Tuesday, the Preds extended their current point streak to 15 straight games. That ties the franchise record for longest point streak in a season, which was set back in 2017-18. And coming up next, we already showed you Mark Shifley's hat trick, but his wasn't the only one on Tuesday. In fact, we've got the highlights from two more caddies after this quick break. in a row for Colorado and Mike we were reminded it's not just Nathan McKinnon Kale McCarr the superstars for the Avs how about Miko Rantanen and what makes him so special yeah he's been a huge part of this win streak and uh, th this race in the central division is, is so much fun to watch but Miko Rantanen and it's a game like this where he makes it look effortless because he's so positionally sound and he gets himself in great spots all the time he times his plays really well you see a nice pass by Drew in there on the deflection. Um, but he always just seems to be in the right spot at the right time, and that's awareness. He's got obviously great size. He can finish. All those things come into play. But and playing with McKinnon, you know, overall obviously helps. You look at guys that get open in the slot in the high danger areas and receive passes in those areas. And Miko Rantanen's top five. The other four guys on there, they score a ton of goals too. It's where you have to go to, to, to score, obviously. It's one of the things that Miko Rantanen does so well, but uh, we focus on McKinnon because he's probably the favorite for the Hart Trophy right now. Kale McCarr is, is what he is. He's the next coming of Bobby Orr, as we know. Miko Rantanen maybe gets lost in the shuffle a little bit, but man, this guy's a superstar in his own right. Good problems to have when you have so many different superstars <laughs> on your roster. The hats were flying on Tuesday, and let me tell you, the hats didn't stop there. Let's head out to Boston. David Pasternak and the Bruins hosting the set. Bruce Lick scores! 
and he's going to go stick on stick to allow this pass to be completed. And then the little wrist shot, he's going to definitely tip it with the blade of his stick up over the glove of Corpusalo. Pasenak has a breakaway, and he scores! Two goals in 256 for the Bruins' leading goal scorer. He's now Corpusalo got a piece, but he didn't get enough. Another opportunity for the Sens here to try and get back into this game. Giroux to Shabbat. Back to Giroux. Now Pinto on top of scores! Shane Pinto sneaks it through in a power play goal. Get it off the board. But the Bruins finally, with 2.45 to go in period two, get their first power play opportunity. Shoots and Brazo! The big boy! The wrister goes on, goal, rebound, Kachuk, scores! Right before the buzzer, Brady Kachuk swings Ottawa back to within one. Jams at five hole in the dying seconds. To Pasternak, centers right through the crease. Pasternak scores! 17th regular season hat trick for Pasternak, 19th overall. Second this season. Gives the Bruins a two-goal lead as they collect the hats. He's one point away. Jasper Bolquist scores! 25 seconds between goals. The kid's slick. Brazo scores his second goal of the night. He had to wait till age 26 to make his NHL debut, and he is the late season surprise. The Bruins decisively six to two. This game's ours. Yeah, they got three from Pasenak. They got two from Brazil on the power play, but it was a total team effort. Well, more on the bear code coming in a little bit later on in the show. But how about the Bees win their third straight? That's the 17th career hat trick for David Pasternak. Good for second most in Bruins franchise history. And coming up, he may not have had a hat trick, but Connor McDavid did get on the board on Tuesday night. Was it enough for an Oilers win over the Habs? Stick around. Highlights from Edmonton are next. Suzuki, nice little flip pass, picked up by Slavkovsky, centering pass in front, Suzuki, score! Off Suzuki, back of the net, Montreal with light, it's 2-1 Edmonton. The puck goes right to the net, and in off of Suzuki. Played up for Evans, Evans quickly, Gouley, some space, Keenan Gouley, shoot, score! Welcome back, Keenan Gouley, 2-2 two, two tie! Caden Cooley is decisive, and he picks the inside of the post. Starts to play up the left side. That wrist shot, McDavid blocks again. And another shot block right there. Gallagher this time paying the price in front of the net for Montembeau. Should be shaking off that left hand, went right down the tunnel. Ender Kane throws it in front. Set it at Hyman, jamming away. Montembeau there. Montembeau again delivers in net. McDavid catches up to it. Over to Nurse. Back to McDavid. What the hell? Leon Dreisaitl puts it away! 3-2 Edmonton! 
Mike Kelly joins us again, and Mike, the Oilers weren't perfect in this one, but they got the win anyway. What did you see down the stretch that proved to be the difference for the Oilers? Yeah, well, it definitely wasn't their A game. That's a good point you, you bring up there. Uh, the difference, look, it was a double minor late in the game that went into overtime, and you give the Edmonton Oilers power play that kind of opportunity, like good luck coming out on the other side of it. It was kind of too bad for Montreal because it wasn't a malicious play. It was kind of unintentional, and uh, nonetheless, double minor, and the tough thing for the Habs, they were right there with the Oilers. Even through 40 minutes when they were down 2-0, they were right there in terms of their play with them. Maybe they even played a little better than Edmonton at times in this game. And then it's Leon, it's Connor to Leon. And we've seen that set up a million times on the power play. We talk about the left circle a lot, uh, goals there, you know, the one-timer, Ovi's office and Stamp. But what about the right circle? Well, that's 15th goal of the season for Leon Drysettle from that spot, the right circle. Only Nikita Kucherov has more so it's a patented play and the Oilers finally executed it so good teams do though they find a way to get two points even when they don't have their a game I love it you mentioned it on the right side of overtime I think they still have that salty taste in their mouth after that Colorado game so good to see them get the two points <laughs> and on the right side here on Tuesday night now let's head out to the rock Jack Hughes and the Devils hosting Sidney Crosby and the Pens both these two teams still feel like they've got something to go here. Dawson Mercer down the seam, gets the front and scores! Dawson Mercer puts it in, and the Devils lead! Well, finally, the Devils, they really put Pittsburgh on their heels. 125 to go in the first, it's turned over to Crosby, and he is denied! Allen got over to make the save, oh and then he stops Pedersen on the second opportunity! you got to be kidding me. Sidney Crosby with a gaping net, and he couldn't put it away. Hell takes it. Back down low to Bunting. Centers in front. Drive for Pedersen. Scores! And they finally break Jake Allen. And then a little drive-by. You got to have a drive-by once in a while. Take away the goalie's eyes. That's enough for Marcus Pedersen just to snap it right home. Luke Hughes left alone. He cranks it. Scores! Oh, you love to see it. We've talked about the Devils needing to shoot more. I don't want a Leo Joseph stick. Now Jack Hughes down the alleyway. Slings it on. Rebound. Score! Alexander Holtz puts it in. Jack Hughes creates. Holtz finishes. 3-1. Now Nelson to the front. Mercer scores! Bang, bang. And the Devils lead by three. Coming alive here on the last couple of shifts. First Holtz, now Mercer, who makes it 4-1. And again, Devils do a good job just getting the puck up ice. Devils have been in the zone the whole time. It's a good play by Riley Smith, but it comes to Brad Jordan to save, and it's tapped in! Timo Meyer does it again! Two power play goals for Meyer and the Devils tonight. I'm with you guys. He has been so determined tonight. Uh, Jari gets a piece of his initial shot, and then what a nice play. Good hand-eye coordination from Timo Meyer to tip that puck home. And Timo Meyer just cannot be stopped lately. Meyer scored two goals in the Devils' win over the Pens on Tuesday, giving him an impressive 10 tallies over his last 10 games. And the Bolts and Golden Knights have combined to win three of the last four cups, but only one team could earn two points on Tuesday. Which would it be? Highlights are next. Under the reach of Eichel, and he is stripped of the puck by Cerrelli, who's going to break away. Short hand in the corner, back to Cerrelli. Scores! And it's a tie game in Las Vegas. Kudrov dancing his way in. Kudrov with a hard wrister. And 8 0. Can't find it. Score! Anthony Duclair. Man, has this guy been hot since pulling on a lightning jersey? That is 11 goals in his last 15 games. 2-1 Tampa after 20 minutes. And the chances for both teams have been few and far between in this period. Howden walking in! Scores! Brad Howden down the wing has tied the game in two! Five-hole pass 
Alex Vasilevsky as Brett Howden ties this up, his sixth of the season. All even after two of the Fortress. Big 20 minutes ahead in the third. Now Vegas shorthanded. Good drop back for point. Scores! Brighton point! And the Lightning have retaken the lead. 3-2. Pops three. Howden with a chance. Save Vasilevsky. Here's Hunter with a shot. Score! It's Ben Hunter with a game tying goal. 3-3 three, three in the third. Took the Golden Knights three minutes and 24 seconds to pull even. Egan Kolasar, two assists tonight. He's working a career high for him. Scores! The Lightning get a bounce, and Brayden Point does not miss his second goal of the game. And it's 4-3, Tampa Bay. Vegas has pulled its dead biter. Here's Kutra. Bingo! Four-point game for Nikita Kucherov, and it's 5-3. Nikita Kucherov picked up a goal and three apples in the Lightning's win. He now has 118 points on the season, giving him the lead over Nathan McKinnon for the most points among all skaters. With the Vancouver Canucks still very much of a mind to spring their way further up the NHL standings. Tonight, game four of this monstrous nine-game homestand with the desperate Buffalo Sabres standing in their way. Drops for Pedersen. Across for Hughes. Had to take it off the boards and he threw it towards the goal. And it's in, I think. The foot's in. I don't know how it got in. It almost looked like the Hughes initial shot got in over the line. Buffalo is challenging the call on the ice for goaltender interference prior to the goal. There's the initial shot. The plays, the puck's allowed to be played. After reviewing the play, the call on the ice is going to stand. Buffalo is so happy. Able to get the puck. Not outside the line. They say Susie kept it in. He centers off the post. Suter with the redirect. It's tipped by Suter. He's had a nice start. The Canucks are on the power play. Besser sees Miller ahead. He gets the puck. Oh, he stopped by Lima. Set play, and JT Miller skated right into that one. Normally played or prior to this year. Lafferty centers. Lindholm chipped in. But he's got a skate to create that chance. And it will be a holding call against Owen Power. Hughes. Miller shoots. Kicked out. And there's Pedersen who digs around the front of the net over Devin Levi and the Canucks a power play goal and a 2-0 lead. Yoki Haru pressured by McCann. And he comes up with the puck. Here's Lafferty. Backhander stopped by Levi. Another strong play by Ilya McCann. Here's Darlene in the middle of the ice walking in. Darlene backhand scores! Just pulls it into the middle to his backhand and he's going to beat the Smith. And he sees the lane coming down and he just pulls it past Veronik. Wraparound shot. Picked up. Here's Miller. It is the Sabres still fighting. Down to the far post, comes up top with 23. Darlene Blatt scores! With 20.7 seconds left, the Sabres are back within one as Rasmus Darlene picks up his second of the game. Susi will just skate to the puck, let time expire, and the Cubs When Hughes picked up two apples in the Canucks' win over the Sabres and continues to solidify his spot as the point leader among all defensemen this season with a career high, 79 points. Hockey is for everyone. Tonight is Pride Night here at the arena. Could get it to settle down. That took the options of handling. Lazat, foil, rebound. Kempe cleared that from his own zone over the glass and into the seats across the ice. So now the Blackhawks with an extended five-on-three opportunity. Down to Kurashev for Felino. They score! The Blackhawks score on the power play, and we're tied at one. It goes off his skate. No kicking motion. Kovatar out up top. Shot. Let's go! have their second lead tonight. They're up two to one. You get zone tight, you get a goal. The Kings up by one. Kopitar, Kempe, Byfield, back out. Now a centering pass. Score! Kopitar from Kempe. Three to one, L.A. Kopitar does not miss. The turnover hurts the Hawks. The Kings, two goal lead. Bedard's going to go to the box and talk about a different set of generations right there with Bedard, the new guy in the block. And then it's a play in the period. Down low, Kempe. Centers, tip, score! up 
to Fiala, sends it down low. starts it. It's the hard pass. It gives Dano the time to get open in front, and the Kings have a four goalie. Jones shot flutters wide, and there's the horn. Another win for Cam Talbot in the goal. The captain, Andre Kopitar. Three points, two goals, and an assist, and the Kings take it here tonight, six to two. Andre Kopitar has dominated the Blackhawks this season. Kopitar collected two tallies and a helper, and the Kings win on Tuesday to give him four goals and an assist over the two games played against Chicago this season. Jackson Lacombe gets it back, but the Ducks clear the zone. And here comes Kaprizov, racing in. Kaprizov in a shot, saved by Gibson. Great chance for the Wild. And a good job getting some pressure there by Lacombe as well to force that shot a little sooner than Kaprizov would have liked. I like to see the energy from the Ducks. Ryan Hartman jams home a rebound. That top line for the Wild, 35 seconds into the second. And Ryan Hartman's 18 to the season, 1-0 Minnesota. Ducks trying to snap a six-game losing streak. The Wild points in each of the last seven. Off the pipe and in. 2-0 Minnesota. Does he touch this as it goes through? He does a nice job getting traffic in front. Does it go off his leg? Or is it going to be John Merrill's goal? And I think it is John Merrill, but a beautiful face-off win. Duck penalty killers are gassed. Boldy another chance. Loose in front. Oh! Jammed in. Score! 3-0 Minnesota. You could just feel this coming, couldn't you, Roxy? As Kaprizov sneaks down with good traffic in front from Hartman. He's got a goal in five straight games now. It was all wild, and he can't corral the puck. Bounces on him, and now it steal. Leads to a two-on-one. Beckman across the line. Beckman across. Score! Hartman rush. Jacob Lucini buries his second of the season. And a 4-0 lead for the Wild. Fourth line that comes through over the Ducks each of their last six games. All losses by multiple goals. And the shutout is complete for Philip Gustafson. And a strong effort on the road. The Wild dominant. Minnesota wins. Time now for Top Shelf. White Tiger crazy. The drop for Jarvis, the return, right back to Jarvis, SCORE! Oh, what a beautiful give and go with Getzel, 2-0 Kane. Hey. And you can see in the full display, Jake Getzel give and go to Seth Jarvis, who has his second on the evening. Madison really out against this man. Two of the GM meetings in beautiful Palm Beach, Florida is in the books. And luckily, our guys took a little break from the fun in the sun to do a little check-in on the latest. Here's EJ Raddick and Elliot Friedman. Day two of the general manager's meeting, and uh, we got some news that there will be a recommendation to the executive committee on further use of Coach's Challenge and Video Review. Yeah, so we should explain the process, yeah. e uh, EJ. Basically what you do is now you go to the competition committee, which is a group of players, GMs, coaches, and then you have to go through the Board of Governors yep. to get approval. But what they're going to recommend are two changes to the Coach's Challenge. Number one, puck over glass. And I really do agree with this. Even though yeah. their numbers are very good, the NHL says the referees and calling it, it's a tough call to make in real time. And basically what it is, if you have it called against you, you can challenge and say, nope, 
that hits something on the way out. Now you can't use it to call a penalty on anyone else, but you can use to challenge one against called against you. The big worry here is if you're wrong, it's a five on three because the initial penalty for puck over glass and the delay of game. Same thing for high sticking. Now for a two minute minor, which wasn't the case before, it's proposed that if you think the high stick was actually a player's own stick or a teammate's stick, you can challenge it if it's called against you. Again, five on three is the worry, and also a reminder that with all coaches' challenges in the last 60 seconds of regulation and in overtime, the league takes over. So there's a lot of nuanced conversation that goes on at these meetings, and one thing that came out of things today was if you have your leg over the boards, try to change a little bit early, you could end up with a penalty. Yes, yeah, so there was a situation recently where a linesman was cut in this situation. We're all concerned about skate cuts. So the way it's going to work is if you have your leg over the bench or something over the bench, you'll get a warning. But if you don't listen to the warning, and we all have parents, we should listen to warnings, you get a bench minor. And so if you see this coming up in the future, it's because of that skate cut. That's why it's happening. All right. So it's on to the competition committee for the Coaches Challenge editions. We'll keep you posted on where that ends up. Well, thanks so much, guys. Time now for our three stars of the night. You get a hattie, you get a hattie, you get a hattie. Our third star of the night is Miko Ranton, and he collected his seventh career hat trick. The second star goes out to Mark Shifley with his first hattie of the season, and our first star of the night belongs to David Pasternak, who picks up his 17th career hat trick, and the Bees win over Ottawa. And we got to roll back this because the hats went flying, but apparently in Boston, the bear coat also gets thrown out there on the ice. David Pasternak making sure to collect the costume, throwing it over to the bench. And I know a lot of people always wonder what happens with the hats, what happens to the bear coats? Well, sometimes they end up in the locker room. And in this case, David Pasternak having some fun as the bees always do over on social media, posing with the costume, 17th career hat trick, now going down in the record books. Now we just need to find out which lucky fan did that bear coat belong to and will they want it back or will Pasternak keep it? This was a fun one here on Tuesday in this 13-game slate. Plenty of hat tricks and plenty of fun. Thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight. I'm Alexa Landestoy, and from Mike Kelly and our entire crew, we'll leave you now with the best from Tuesday. The regular season ends a month minus one day from tonight. Time to dial in. Here we go. Ring the bell. Gloria Henry. That is the most honorable empty net hat trick you will ever see. The eighth career hat trick for Mark Shifley. In the seventh place in team history. Michael Rantanen, it's the hat trick for the Moose. Here's a look at the top ten saves from the past week. And flicked up the boards by Milano. Faramari. Drop pass Dylan Strome looking on low. Back to Winter. Tremendous stop, Stuart Skeeter. Unreal. And sometimes it's just not your night, even for the grade eight. Hasn't been many in his career, but I'll tell you what, he looked at the sky after this one. That's three great saves on Ovechkin. Anji Apani swipes it ahead. Coleman for Backlund breaking in. Backlund with a chance to the backhand. Stolars keeps it out of the net. Oh, Backlund went for the old Forsberg move. Stolars using every inch of that frame to make these saves. He has done it numerous times, hasn't he? The Jersey kid coming up big. Schmaltz in deep. Garrett Hayden tries to keep it away from Seth Jones. Pass Gunther. Moser tees up. Keller, what a stop by Soderblom. Well, we talked about the contribution from so many different skaters on this roster. Don't forget the netminder. He has had some dandies here tonight. Great read and react. He sees a transition from his right to his left. Severson cross ice to Branson. Picked off. Moving to the net. Cross ice shot. Oh, what a save. Rebound not collected by the Senators and an outstanding effort by the Blue Jackets defense in front of Burst Lincolns. Aldis made a spectacular save in that sequence as that second rebound. Wow, just a misfire. Now the Sabres the other way from Turkus. The Zekas got knocked into by Skinner. It leads to a two on one. And Sorokin got across in the full split on Peyton Krebs. <laughs> what a save there 
by Sorokin. He gets across. Two on one. I think that's just a play of Sorokin really weeding that play all the way because he had a little, he had a quick push. You can see the glove gets over. Streak of 0 for 14. Wide open net. Forsberg, oh, what a glove stop to Rob Texier. Oh, this is an unbelievable save. A wide open net. And what an extension by Anton Forsberg. Turned over puck off the rebound. Lost coverage on the back door. Forsberg rips this out of the air. Those guys are just always helpful. Here's Mangiapane to the net. And it's knocked away by Sam Reinhardt. Look at this save by Stolarz. Watch that back leg as he sweeps it across. Oh, it's nice to be tall and lanky when you're a goaltender. Across for Hunt. Right from the goal score, sends this one out front. Another chance at Anderson makes the save on Backlick. Oh, Mr. Anderson. That is going to be in the highlights tonight. What a paddle save. Watch his eyes and then watch the paddle of the stick. After he feels contact and desperation, the way he turns the stick over. What a save. He'll celebrate a birthday, his 20th on March the 30th. As that shot kick inside, rebound, block, stop! Caden Primo at the Bell Center, unbelievable! <laughs> Highlight of the night! Caden Primo takes it away with a crazy glove save on a rebound. Jari prevented him from getting the Hattie. Looking to join Kale McCarr last week for Hattrick. Wide open. Ovechkin. What a remarkable save. His first of the night. Stewart Skinner. Full stretch. Ovechkin can't believe it. Oshie taps Skinner appreciatively. He knows he's seen one of the best saves all year. That's all you can do. An eyelash away from goal number 841.